Hey everybody, welcome back to Viewpoint Christian Academy for another Monday Moment. I'm Dr. Adam Rondo, Director of Viewpoint Christian Academy, and I'm excited today to be able to talk with you about pace scoring and why it's important, quiz notes in Ignitia and why they're so important, and a brand new assessment software that we're going to begin using with some of our students called iStation. Stay tuned as we talk about these things on this Monday Moment. All right, so I'm excited to be able to go over some more practical items. We've uh, taken a break from some of these practical things and, and uh, did our two-part interview with Mrs. Gayla McGuire, the founder of Viewpoint Christian Academy. So excited to have been able to have that opportunity. If you missed those, go back and check them out. And if you missed them because you forgot to subscribe to our channel, take a minute right now, hit the subscribe button, ding the bell, get the notifications, and you will be aware of all the videos and the content that's coming your way to help you maximize the program that Viewpoint offers. So let's talk today, first we're going to talk to the students in our booklet curriculum, and those are the paces. And as they're doing the paces, we also provide with those paces some score keys. And I want to talk to parents, and, 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 uh, and you can communicate this and convey this to your student children as well, the importance and the value of scoring those. In fact, I've got a demo here a demo video of my son who uses the paper curriculum. He's in third grade and he's using the paper curriculum uh, this year. And I'm going to show you how he approaches his scoring and just kind of a quick demo. And I want you to notice that as he is doing this work, uh, first of all, I want you to see that he has been given and granted access. He didn't just have those score keys. He had to actually go to a particular location where we kept them. So score keys need to be kept secure. But what he did was he was able to open the score key up to the page where he had to do the work, where he had done the work, and was able to do a very simple basic process of what? Matching. Why do we do this? What's the point of doing the score, scoring? Why would we have, have the students do this? Now, some parents are like, yeah, I'm not going to bother with the score keys. I'm just going to score it myself. And if, you're gonna, you know, if, you're, if you've got a child in first or second grade, uh, maybe even third grade, most of the time, you know the, that material and you're able to you probably accurately score it yourself. However, it is much more efficient to use those score keys. Why? Well, you don't have to think. You don't have to uh, look anything up. You, all you have to do is boom, 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 match. It's very simple. It's very easy and it's foolproof. So if you just do the matching, it's very efficient and it's also very accurate. Accuracy in the schoolwork is really important. The reason why we want every question in that booklet to be right is because we want to make sure that they're learning the right things and not the what? Not the wrong things. And so if they get something wrong, they put an X on it, go back to their work area, correct it, and then check it again. And when it's all correct, they can circle that X and say, okay, I did get it wrong, but now it's right. We want them to have 100% on every page in the pace. Why is that important? Because that is how they get to mastery. Don't just leave it wrong, make it right. And so we want them to learn that. Let's make it right. Now, obviously on the tests, that's not something we do. But if you're following this procedure of going through and maintaining that accuracy throughout on every page, it's going to show up and translate into higher test grades and into success and, mas and a demonstration of mastery on that pace or unit test. So please definitely take advantage of those. We will, again, we want them to learn the correct things and not the incorrect. Um, and uh, hopefully that demonstration was a, a helpful, uh, helpful some helpful suggestions to you for that. Notice we had a three ring binder and how we use that. Now, if you have any questions about that, maybe you have some ideas, uh, would like some ideas as to how to properly implement that. Should I do it? Should I allow the student to do it? You should go ahead and allow the student to do it. If you can trust them, if they're being dependable and responsible, if you're supervising them, let your child do the scoring themselves. Now, obviously, don't just give them the score key because they don't, we don't want them to have the temptation of copying, right? We don't want them to do that. But if it's in a secure place that you can monitor, go ahead and allow them to do the scoring or make them approach you and get permission to, to have the book. But get use the score keys and help that to be efficient and effective and, and, uh, and uh, demonstrate that accuracy that they really need in, the, in that process. Okay, now moving on to students who might be doing our online program and our ignition. 
One of the biggest areas of struggle with ignition. Now again, uh, we've talked about this before, but you got to get a 100% on every lesson. And the score key, there's no score key because what? Either, uh, either the student, uh, either the system scores it and they get three attempts to get the correct answer or a teacher is scoring something like an essay question. So um, that, that, that ensures the accuracy and that ensures if they get 100% on that lesson, it ensures that they did so because they put in the effort, they put in the time, they put in the hard work, and uh, they studied the material and they got it done. Now, let's say they go onto the quiz, and remember with a quiz, they get one attempt to go through, and then it will show them their score. If they get an 80% or better, it says you passed, you can move on. If they get less than an 80%, it will give them a second attempt at that quiz. Before the student jumps in and takes that second attempt, they should go back into the lesson and study some of the things that they did not know. My, my daughter, and I got some examples of her doing some work here on a quiz and taking some notes uh, in these videos. Uh, she uses the ignition program. She's in ninth grade. And she, when she does a quiz, will oftentimes, going through the first time, if she's not sure how a question is, she'll write it down. And then after that first time, if she gets below an 80, uh, she knows which question she couldn't, wasn't certain about, and she can go back into the lessons, look those up, and then take it again that second time and get a better score. And if she still doesn't that second time, then she will go back into the lesson, and this is what every child needs to do. If they don't get that 80% after two attempts, every student needs to go back into the lesson, look up the questions that are wrong, get out the notebook, just like you see Anna doing right here, and write down the questions that are wrong so you can go back into the material and look up the correct answers for yet another attempt. This is a twofold purpose here. All right, what's the twofold purpose? Number one, it's helping the student to reinforce the material by writing it down. Very important, there's a very high correlation, very, very high correlation between good test grades and good note taking. Those two go together. If a student's taking good notes, they will get good grades on the test. Uh, they will get that mastery level. They will achieve that. All right? Uh, but they also need to learn the right thing. And how are they going to figure out what's right or wrong? Well, this, the system's not going to say, this is wrong and this is the answer. No, it's going to say, this is wrong. And that forces the student to then go back into the lesson and do some more study and research on that to find the correct answer. Write the correct answer in their notes. And now they have that new correct answer locked in their brain. They can get the, the quiz reset, take it again. After that third time, they should pass. Students shouldn't be taking quizzes more than three times. On rare occasions, they may need to take them a fourth time. Uh, but most of the time, they should be getting that 80% threshold by the third time. If they are doing it accurate, they're going in the first time, doing their best, making note of what they didn't know, go back in and study if they need to the second time. Then after the second time, if they still don't hit that 80% threshold, they go back and take notes. And those notes will get them over, the, over that 80% every time if they're doing this procedure. Very rarely, uh, hardly ever will a student who's taking notes or following these steps have to do a quiz more than a third time. Uh, it may happen, but very, very rarely. All right. And again, they need to learn the right things. This is why we have them do that. And this procedure will help them. Now this, do they like it? Absolutely not. Um, and may they resist it? Yes, they might. But if they will follow this procedure, it will bring them success. Guaranteed. It, uh, over and over and over again, this is what we see. The students who do this, they have success and they are able to master that material. All right, now the final thing I want to talk to you today about is for many of the students in our kindergarten and elementary program, um, most of them will be in a younger grade, but we have available, we're just starting this now, the implementation, for not for everybody, it's not an across the board thing for the school, but many of the young, all the kindergartners, uh, the first graders, the second graders, and perhaps some in, in higher grades than that, will have access to a brand new software uh, assessment software that we, we're using. Some, some people who were in uh, Viewpoint Christian Academy years back might remember something called the Reading Machine or Read Master. Well, we've got a brand new version of that. And this not, doesn't just give you a story to read and then ask you questions like the old program used to that we used to use years ago. This actually uses a game style of assessment. So the students will play games learning games, and that learning game will test them and find out where they are at and give us a report 
uh, the teachers an assessment of where they are and then we'll also have the opportunity to assign some work back. It's a monthly assessment. So once every month the student will need to log in and do their work. This software is available on uh, Windows, Mac, Android devices, Kindle devices, uh, I, iPads, etc. Uh, in fact, you can even install the app onto just your Chrome browser as an extension browser. If you have a Chromebook, it will work on that. Uh, so we really want these students to be able to do this. Uh, they need to do it at the beginning of the month. So this, this video is dropping on November 2nd. You will be getting your information about how to log in and set that all up. Get, once you get that, Try to get them to do that this week, okay? So between the week of the 2nd and the, and the 6th, between the 2nd and the 6th. Get that done because that's going to give us an early month assessment. And then we'll be able to take that assessment and perhaps identify some areas, uh, strengths and weaknesses, help target our, uh, our learning a little bit more, help emphasize some things. And also, we will be able to assign some specific lessons within that software so the child can log back in and do some things. And, and again, it's all game-based learning, so they'll have a lot of fun. And, and the students that I have tested out this with, they went 40, 40 minutes, hour, or even more, and they still wanted more. I had to make them stop. Because, like, okay, that's enough. <laughs> Let's move on and do something else. But they were participating in this learning these learning activities and this testing process and they were just having fun. It was a blast because it's so interactive and so game-like. So uh, you, may, you may need to, to rein them in a little bit once they get started. So just keep that in mind as well. Uh, but hey, I hope this has been a blessing to you. If you like what we're sharing in this video, if this has been any tips or, success, or help in any way, give it a thumbs up. Go ahead and share it. Tell your friends about it. If, if you've got friends out there who are in need of some kind of home-based learning solution, Tell them about us. We can help students. We are, listen, uh, pretty soon we're going to have some t statistics come out about our first quarter. It is mind blowing the amount of learning that Viewpoint students are, are, are achieving. The amount of learning that is occurring, the amount of information, the amount of work that is being accomplished. It's mind blowing. I wish you could see what I could see and, and just understand that. This program works and kids are being sick. And I, I, I've had the privilege of messaging students back and forth about the things of God. I've had the privilege of talking with them about eternity. The things that they are learning in this curriculum, the scriptures that they are learning, the salvation, the gospel that's being presented, the scripture truths. It's amazing. God's doing some great things. Get your friends involved if they're not already involved because this is good stuff. All right. God bless you. Don't forget, give us a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't already. Tell your friends about us. God bless you. Have a great week. Hope you have a fantastic month.